In Matthew 26 and verses 57 and 58, the Bible reads, They that had laid hold on Jesus led him away to Caiaphas the high priest, where the scribes and the elders were assembled. But Peter followed him afar off unto the high priest's palace and went in and sat with the servants to see the end. Those last four words, to see the end, tells me that Peter had lost hope. You see, he was there in the garden with Jesus when they arrested him. And I'm sure that there were many things spoken that day from Christ's enemies that was not written in the Bible. So I have no doubt that the words of death were freely flowing among them. And as Peter saw Jesus surrender himself over to his enemies, Peter no doubt felt that the end had come. He followed as they brought Jesus to the high priest's palace and he was standing by as they brought forth the accusations and at last he heard them cry out that Jesus had spoken blasphemy and was worthy of death. And if that wasn't enough, he himself denied that he knew the Lord. After he denied, the Bible said that Jesus then turned and he looked at Peter. And as he held his gaze, Peter remembered the Lord's words. Before the cock crow, thou shalt deny me thrice. The Bible said that Peter went out and he wept bitterly. Now, I don't know where Peter went. Some seem to think that he may have gone back to the garden where he had just been with Jesus. If that is the case, then he would have been close enough to hear them shouting, away with him, crucify him, as they led Jesus to Golgotha's hill. Oh, I'm sure that Peter's heart sank lower as Satan screamed in his head, it is over. There in the garden, he could have possibly heard the ringing of the hammer and Jesus crying out as the nails were being drove into his hands and into his feet. And then Peter's heart trembled as the sky turned dark and Jesus cried, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? As Peter wept in repentance over his own failure, Tears of sorrow also flowed as he questioned why the Lord had not delivered himself. He had the power to. Then as he heard the Lord cry from that cross, It is finished. And the earth began to quake beneath him. Everything inside of Peter died. The end had come. It is over. Christ is dead. Peter had seen the end. For three days, Peter and the disciples hid themselves for fear of the Jews. And on the first day of the week, the women came running to them saying that Jesus is gone. They have taken the Lord and we don't know where they have laid him. So Peter and John ran for the tomb. And as they looked inside, they both saw the grave clothes, but Jesus' body was not there. The Bible said that John believed, but nothing was said that Peter believed. In fact, when the women came saying that an angel had appeared telling them that Jesus was risen, Luke wrote that their words were unto them as idle tales and they believed them not. Peter was no doubt overtaken with the fact that the end had come. While he had saw the empty tomb, he is gone. It was the end of Christ. It was the end of hope, the end of salvation. But no, Peter, no. What you call the end is really the beginning, the beginning of hope the beginning of salvation, the beginning of life. For Jesus said, because I live, ye shall live also. Jesus conquered death. 
The Bible said death has been swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin. But as Paul said, thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. When Jesus arose on that third day, a new beginning started for all of mankind. For now, since debt had been paid, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. My friend, it doesn't matter who we are or where we've been. When we come to Jesus in true repentance, He forgives and washes away. He takes away our sin. All things are passed away, and behold, all things become new. The end truly brought a glorious beginning for all who believe. Praise be unto God. May God bless you and give you His peace.